of both sitting at a record of two and six. Now that means that uh, because they found their wins against one another, that we've got to have a tiebreaker to see who gets to be the other squad making it out of the group. Udir, Urgot, and Amumu. Amumu? I don't know what they've been, I don't know what they've been seeing from Pabu, but this is not a, this ain't right. <laughs> this ain't right. I know they missed the band, uh, band in their first game of the tournament. I don't want to believe that that's what happened here, but. Uh. Producers just told me yes. that is intentional. That That is the correct ban. Okay. This is this is not a misclick. All this right. is not a client bugging out. That that Amumu ban is actually what they meant to ban. The Urgot and the Udir, I at least understand, because we've seen those, right? Yes. And then over on the other side, it's three jungle bans. So out of our first six bans, Raz, we get five of them targeted at the jungle, one of which is a champion I haven't seen since season two. Mm -hmm. And the last remaining one is Bio Panther's main champion. First pick of the draft is the Gnar for boss. On the other side, it's Bio Panther taking the Jace into it, as well as the Nautilus being locked in for decoy. So very naturally, we're looking towards the jungle being the pick that's hidden here. Uh, you know, Ananasik in domestic play has been the guy who has games where he's five pick jungle. Just a reminder though, that he is on blue side. So if Pennant really wanted to, they can hide jungle into four five. Just as a concern there, there are way too many junglers that are on the ban list. So then they're just gonna be adding more. Pentanet will have the fourth pick so they can just go to a priority ban or pick that is. So this is going super wild very quickly. Unicorns have loved to practice some sauce and they're ready to show it in this last game. Okay, well, we've got both bottom lane components locked in for the unicorns before the second part of the bands roll in. It'll be, it'll be Alistar and Kaisa here yet again. And Zaya and Nautilus working together for the bottom lane of Pentanet. How are we feeling about the Zaya here? Zaya, super defensive. It is a constant pick that we've seen going into the Kai'Sa that wants to dive in. So I'm expecting an exhaust once more from Decoy here just to see that happening. And then of course, Praetith will have the defensive measures to be able to deal with that as the game goes on. Could poke from the Jace as well, but if I'm looking towards Unicorn for Zolov, they have a lot of engage. The Alistar, the Gnar that we've seen. Uh, the first pick Gnar is something that we've seen in North America. It's the NA classic, or at least the DSM <laughs> classic. Um, but, you know, it, is, it does provide consistent engage. Orianna, I think, should be something they should be afraid of. Yes. Okay, Basically there it is. Ban out Orianna because it has way too many engage points with Alistar and Gnar. And I want to see what that four pick is going to be from Pentanet because that's another mid lane ban now, by the way, from Pentanet. They're just chipping at the mid lane as well. Okay, Silas and Syndra banned out. What will our final ban of this tiebreaker draft be? The Rise. Yeah. All right, so. Now, ooh, Karthus locked in Instantly. for Pentanet. Pabu has a deep champion ocean. And just taking a look at the pick percentage here, zero. Has not been picked yet. We have seen a Got ban. banned once. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it got banned one time. I just love that both junglers are looking at each other and saying, hey man, we, have, we both have deep champion pools and it's now gonna be Pentanet, or at least uh, Unicorns of Love, that know what they're dealing in. And this is gonna be a Nana 6 Kha'Zix that he's bringing out in this final one. Okay, the Kha'Zix locked in. Remember that if you see Karthus in the jungle, he's gonna be on a PVE adventure. He's gonna cycle his camps fast as hell. He's going to press R to contribute to the actual flow of the game, and he's going to make you have to keep up with him and scale into a monster. Kha'Zix is the type of champion that can invade him, that can threaten him, that can make him think twice, and it'll be up to An Ananasic to make sure he's doing that. We'll see the victor now locked in as the mid laner for the side of the Unicorns. His win rate looks pretty abysmal at 29% right now, but the Unicorns are putting their faith that this is the right pick to win this tiebreaker. Yeah, especially really early on in the tournament, you're going to get, you know, a bad sample size. And also, it is just being picked by Unicorns of Love, and they're losing a lot of games. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just going to happen where you're going to see that. But Victor is a great pick. In this specific game, I like the fact that there is quite a bit of zone control. The, the W there from the Victor, so he can put down that field. And of course, once the evolution of W comes through from Kha'Zix, can also get some slows in the team fights as we go along. But it's going to be what Pentanet doesn't expect when it's going to be uh, the Karthus from Pabu going from point A to point B, is there going to be a Kha'Zix in the bush? Is he there first? Yeah. 
that's what I'm looking at because Anana Stick can has been creative in the past and can pre be creative in this game because there are a lot of uh, low HP targets, including Bio Panther's Jace. And it will be important to make sure that Pabu doesn't fall too far behind this game. If he does end up becoming Kha'Zix food, he's the only source of AP damage on his team, really. Yeah. Yes, there is. Now, you know, I will go ahead and preface this with a little bit of, you know, they have some AP damage to like the base values of some abilities and whatnot. But in terms of major AP threat, it's all Karthus. So that means that it's up to Pabu to supply plenty of damage here for Pantanet to make sure he's landing all of those Qs in team fights as well, because otherwise a little bit of armor can be a big problem. Hey, is the Jace lanes are going to keep him up. The Lee Sin and the Jace in their specific matchups are definitely going to support him. And so this is where I'm more concerned for the Kha'Zix, because even though I gave that caveat of the fact that he can look and, and, and try to assassinate, the lanes are going to be in favor of Pentanet, and Karthus is going to be a, st a speed demon. The reason why Kha'Zix isn't being seen so frequently is because it is a speed demon jungle meta. Uh, if you can't clear fast, then you are going to fall behind, very simply put. So I'm looking at Anonistic to see what he can do to be creative when he's in a deficit naturally at the beginning of the game. Yeah, Kha'Zix clear speed compared to things like modern day Morgana, modern day rumble stuff like nidalee and udir that have always been fast clearers you've got to be making some pvp happen on this champion to stay caught up immediately my eyes are drawn to the keystone ananasic has conqueror oftentimes if kha'zixes are going for the traditional assassin build you'll see something more like an electrocute maybe a dark harvest if they're really feeling it but the conqueror keystone often leads me to believe it'll be more of that bruiser approach to the champion yeah a thicker kha'zix We've seen this. <laughs> <laughs> of course you had to put it that Absolutely. way man double c's up <laughs> ready to go i can't uh, as the game goes on, like, we already talked about the utility that he has. If he's isolated slow on his Evolved W, like, then great, right? He can find a target. But being in the fight a little bit longer is definitely going to be helpful, especially since he's not going to be the only one doing it in the back uh, side of the enemy composition. Nar and, Al and the Alistar are going to help him out. So, uh, Unicorns of Love definitely looking at Praed. Praetith and Pabu are going to be the ones that are the targets. I want to see if they can get that done. So here's something you don't often see in a modern day game of League of Legends, Mr. Razzleplasm. What's up? Three exhausts. You have exhaust for both AD carries. I hope you like aggro bottom lanes because we got exhaust ignite in both of these duos as well as Pabu opting away from a flash. He would rather have the exhaust because it'll give him the edge if he runs into a Nanasic in the jungle. Yeah, the, the Karthus exhaust makes a lot of sense we've seen this when as you said if there's any threat assassination threat or just an overall 1v1 that's an expectation for Karthus then slap on the exhaust and he knows that he has a, a side laners that will come out and help him so that for sure is the case I'm a little bit questioning Lodix exhaust I don't really see uh, unless if it's going to be the least sin that he's quite afraid of I would have liked the heal, maybe even a cleanse, but a heal definitely makes more sense. But in the end of the day, this is the choice that he see has made, and I want to see the effectiveness in the team fights going forward. Also, keep your eyes on this mid lane, seeing if Lee Sin is able to really bring the pain onto Victor as we move forward in this game. Raz, do you, for the people at home who might not be very well versed with Lee Sin yep. in, uh, in solo lanes, break it down for me a little bit because we've talked about him plenty as a top laner. We've mentioned how he can still find his way back into the jungle. We know he's a flex pick into mid, but what makes this work into something like Victor where it traditionally doesn't? A lot of the range advantage that you would give towards the pick like Victor, so you can just start chunking at him. Remember, the mana cost from Victor matters here versus an energy based champion that has sustain in the lane. So he can go for a W max and just sustain out the consistent damage and just stay in the lane longer. Take a look at this invade, though. Okay, there's your exhaust. This was important. Nice smite by Anonisic, making sure that he steals away that large Krug. Now, remember, a lot of the gold has been moved away from that large Krug in the modern version of League of Legends, so you still want to stick around, steal the entirety of the camp, and there you go. And that's what we wanted to see from this Kha'Zix pick. Perfect timing from Kha'Zix coming in as Boss was getting the wave pushed in completely. And Kha'Zix is able to make this happen while his full clear is still not done. Like, he's going to be able to go back towards his Gromp and his... Uh, wolf camp after being able to take scuttle, but this is a nice leg up here if you're a non-sick now starting out this game.
And you can see Chaz having priority, having shove there in the mid lane. Two points in the E. Lots of times, Lane Lee Sin does like to max that over the Q, which yeah. you traditionally see from his jungle counterpart. And now we've got Decoy waiting in the wings. Flash dredge line gets the flash back out of no man. Beautiful. And now you're able to have a flashless victor later on that is going to be a target. Once Lee Sin hits six, oh, that's yeah. who you want to look at. So love that roam from Decoy. We've seen it plenty when Ming is able to pilot the Nautilus, and now, you know, he's able to mimic that. Okay, Scuttle Crab goes over to Pabu, so we're gonna see one crab go to each jungler. And Karthus loves being able to steal chickens. Everything in his kit is AoE. The chickens are easily farmed by that, so Pabu just steps forward, wants to take away whatever he can, and the camp is already done by the time that Ananasig makes his way over. Ah, and he uh, didn't even get to see any stray uh, raptors there, so he doesn't even know. Now he's going to be able to see, I think, Kha'Zix, uh, Karthus go straight through the mid lane, so he's going to have an idea. But yeah, sucks that he's able to come back to his side of the map and not see uh, or not get a hand on his raptors. But this is just a great start here from Pabu. Understood that he's losing both his exhaust from the early skirmish, but he comes out alive on that one and is able to steal a camp back. Boss with a good trade there onto Bio Panther because he was just about to transform. Bio Panther can't try to engage on him with a melee form Q. There's yeah. no chance to do that if he's going to turn into Mega Nar, immediately stun you, hit you with that empowered Q as well. So that just means free damage there for Boss in that 1v1 matchup. That's staying nice and close. And honestly, Raz, every lane is very close. You can see the gold not really leaning towards either team here during the laning phase. We have seen some pretty big laning advantages in this group whenever RNG G is playing, but here between these two teams, which are much more closely matched, now Bio Panther's in a bad spot, tries to get away with two of the skies. Oh, that deny with the hammer, but Boss is there anyway, and it's first blood to the unicorn. Well done from Ananasik, patiently waiting for the teleport to come down, and Boss was able to hit him with a fadeaway. So great job overall for Unicorns of Love to be able to get a kill there as Jace was just trying to fix his lane. And to walk back into the question you asked a little earlier on about Lee Sin, although I did give an answer, uh, it's just how difficult it is for no mans to deal with this. Remember, he had to base back first when he had no mana, being yep. able to take a look back at this, of course, in the replay. Uh, yeah, Bio Panther wanted to fix his wave, knew that there was a risk involved, thought he could still get out. Really close to being able to do so. Yeah. A flash comes through from Boss to make it work. Boss with the flash, gets the Q, guarantees the kill. Nicely done there to give the Unicorns a nice little lead here. Six and a half minutes into the game. Still no Drakes taken by either side. Here in bottom lane, though, the 2v2 is looking good for the Unicorns. And here we go. There goes your kill. But will there be a return? Pray that does find it. Now back in the top side, we got another play happening. It's Boss who's under threat from the enemy jungle. Nice sidestep from both Pentanet players. Staying out of the way of the ulti. Remember that he had to use the flash for the last kill. So this one's easy money for Bio. Panther and our game is all tied up. Yeah, and Boss used this teleport really early on in the previous play, so he's going to lose all the minions off that as well. Great response from Pentanet topside while still being able to respond bot lane on this one. A lot of chunking down on towards Chaz, but he's going to stay alive here. Yeah, he can dash away there using the safeguard. Go to the minion, get out of the last little bit of the Chaos Storm. Still feeling okay here in this matchup. He still has his flash. He still has his kick. There are potentially plays to be made. Both supports have arrived. And upon seeing that Santos is here, Chaz no longer wants anything to do with this fight. So the sustain that, uh, you know, Lee Sin has in this lane and also just the wave clear that he has when he maxes his Z. So this is the engage that Boss went for. Didn't know that Pabu was just chilling in the bush. And take a look at this. Uh, the fact is that the, both Pentanet players dodged out in the ultimate from Boss, so they knew that they didn't, you know, they didn't have to worry at right. all. Easy kill on towards Dinar. Dodge the ulti, no flash. All it comes down to is who you want to give the kill to, and they do decide to give it to Bio Panther. Looking back in the jungle, Anonasix doing a very good job of keeping pace with Pabu on the Karthus. That's generally one of the things that I always track whenever jungle Karthus is in the game is what does that tempo look like because he can keep things so yeah. high-paced. But right now, things are looking all right. It's still a slight advantage towards Pabu experience-wise, does have level 7 to the level 6, but you're right. If Kha'Zix is at this point of the game where he's able to make an impact on the map and he's not that far behind, he is definitely happy. Might find a pick here. Chaz in some trouble, dashes away, staying alive, flashing out now. Ananasik trying to chase after this, but can't quite close the distance. And another reason why Lee Sin is so good in the mid lane is also just too damn safe. 
Can Q towards a minion wave behind him? Can W towards an, a, a teammate or a minion as well? Like, there are so many things, or work, um, <laughs> that he could do to get out of any ganking situation. And that was a damn good one from Ananasik. Just couldn't get the kill, but he does get the flash. Very, very good stuff here. Unicorns of Love trying to keep this game as close as possible. Having a much better game than we saw in the previous time these two matched up. And I feel like I really want this whole game to be super close, Raz. I want this to come down to the wire. I want this to be the greatest battle we've seen out of these two teams. Because honestly, with the state of this group, with Vietnam not being able to participate in MSI and all these teams having to play that many more games against every other team in the group, They've already played each other four times. It's two and two. So this is the deciding match in our really, really delayed best of five between <laughs> these two teams. Yeah, and so bangers are going to happen when there's that level of familiarity. Ananasik being able to uh, get these picks, be confident in knowing what Pentanet wants to do, and this fight is going to start. Okay, Chaz is in some trouble. He has no flash. Remember, he already had to use it earlier. He's not able to get away in time. Santos takes the kill, and now with the Rift Herald undefendable by Pentanet, that'll just end up, it'll reset at least. There's no leash, but the Unicorns of Love have control over the pit. And that blows for Pentanet, because they had the right to this Rift Herald. Their bot lane was the first one that was pushing up uh, from the bot lane because they had first shove, so Nautilus was there first. And Chaz just needed to not, you know, not get picked, as simple as it, as it was, right? He just got picked in a really bad timing uh, with ultimate up, full HP and all these things. So now you have to respond opposite side of the map. They want to find a pick on the Lord's Lodic. Okay, there comes a Karthus ulti, throwing the Kai'Sa up into the air, and Praetith takes the kill, no problem. All right, top side of the map doesn't work out. Goes straight towards Lodic, and they find this one. Oh! Oh, Santa's trying to grab a cheeky kill, but now the problem is there's beef on the menu for dinner, and Santa's will likely be killed before he gets to any help. Ananasic cannot get there in time, and with both enemy bot laners dead, Lodic only just now respawning. First Drake of the game goes over to Pentanet, although it is a very late first Drake. Yeah, I mean, still, adrenaline was pumping through Santa's. I thought he's had a pretty good day so far, but... Flash on decoy, great timing there to know that he can get out of that one. And it just puts Santos in a really bad position. And that's gonna mean two kills now on towards Praed, uh, who was struggling in his previous game versus RNG on the vein, is now set up to succeed in a composition that is honestly about him. So I like this so far from Pennanet and what's gonna be their best chance. Remember, quick shots did the best when he was on the desk. This is the first opportunity Oceania has to get out of the first stage in an international event. So, yeah. Here we go. Okay, top side, Boss and Bio Panther getting into it, 1v1. Bio Panther's gonna run back to his own tri brush, but who's that waiting for him? It's No Man's! Bio Panther gets over the wall with a flash and just manages to escape the gravity well. Man, you did not expect that roam from No Man's. Now, no flash on a Bio Panther. That's gonna mean a lot. They can make another visit up towards the top side of the map. And Chaz is just constantly targeted here by the Unicorns of Love. Drops his control ward to be able to escape, so even if he doesn't have the flash, he's still fine now. A lot of saber rattling happening here. Both teams are threatening the other ones that they're going to start the fight, but the tr trigger never gets pulled. Both of them just know each other way too damn well. Mm -hmm. After this amount of time, you already said it, man, the familiarity. That's what's causing this to become such a close game here between these two. Praetith throws out the feathers, gets his way back out. Yeah, he takes a turret shot, but Lodic took about as much damage from the feathers anyway, so we'll call that one even. Praetith continues to command about a 20 CS lead here in the bottom lane. Of course, a similar lead can be found for the Unicorns of Love back at mid, while top and jungle remain incredibly incredibly even. Such an awesome fifth game yeah. that we're getting to see between these two. There's an adaptation alert where Lodic has gone towards Kraken Slayer other than... Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Bio Panther. Bio Panther's about to become bug food, but he's got backup, and that's what matters the most. Chaz going in, tries to go for the kick here. No Man's in some danger. No Man's with the outplay. The Ignite should still kill him, but beautifully done to make it a one for one. Wow, Chaz was going for it. Still gets killed on that one, on a play that Pentanet was making. So really good job from No Man's to get something out of it. No Man's new to flash. He knew that Chaz wanted to go there for that kick. He flashes so that he doesn't get knocked away from the turret. It keeps Chaz in range, and it makes that trade go even. Now with Pentanet rotating up into the top lane, they'll look for another play. Remember that Ananasic does not have the ulti, but they can disengage in time. So the adaptation that I was talking about was mostly about Lodic having Kraken Slater instead of the Gale Force. You know, Gale Force 
uh, and the collector is what would I would be expecting versus a squishier composition. But I think he's just wanting to play this front to back. We'll probably see a Phantom Dancer, but the fight is happening here. Prey is getting fancy now. Freitas with that Gale Force of his own, the extra playmaking, the extra execution. This item was just made as the answer for AD carries that wanted to have more agency in what they do. And Freitas, I like seeing what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, we saw a little bit of that from Gala during this uh, tournament. Whenever he feels like he has an edge in the matchup and he's in kill range, he goes for it. And Freitas is just trying to force him back there. If, if, if there was just one misstep, Maybe that turned into a kill. Remember that Ludic does have stopwatch, so very likely that it would be a stopwatch burned before the next dragon. But he keeps that. Next dragon should be a focus. This Pendanet second dragon. They've been so good at being able to stack dragons so far in the tournament, especially versus Unicorns Love. UOL must fight for these dragons. They've been giving them uh, to Pendanet too frequently. Okay, no man stepping away from the dredge line there. We've got a little bit over a minute until the second Drake of the game spawns with a very slight gold lead for the side of Pentanet. But honestly, Raz, with the game being this close and with us getting to the point now where we're entering into the mid game, where we will start seeing those full size team fights, one really good fight for either team could determine the tempo of things for the next, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. And I think this fight could be it. Nara's getting the first push up top side, and he has teleport advantage. Jace is answering now, and so that means Unicorns of Love has the first touch on this dragon. Pennanet, though, is smart enough to recognize that they're playing away from it. They don't want to get caught during this entire scuffle. So they're playing more patiently where Unicorns of Love are saying, hey, they're getting vision here. We can clear it out completely. This is the fight. Decoy getting caught, flashing away, staying alive, re-engage on the enemy jungler, and Ananasik is destroyed. Praedith with the killing spree. Another bait on a decoy's flash. His namesake His is name. true. His <laughs> name, man. He's called the decoy. <laughs> it's coming to fruition, man. <laughs> He's getting a lot of kills on people who could think they could take his head. Not happening today and killing off the enemy jungler. Yes, Anonisic will be alive in time for the dragon to spawn, but he'll still be having to run over here. Now Pabu's coming in. Decoy's right behind him. Decoy will tank up the turret here at the start. Santos losing a little bit of HP there. The Feather pullback doing a bit more damage. Biopanther gets caught by a single boomerang. Ananasic going right back out onto the map, looking to get out here in time. Pentanet already onto the Drake. They want to burn this down before their opponents are able to contest, and they will do just that to Drake lead to Pentanet. Pentanet is just scaling throughout the groups. People were memeing them at the very beginning, but they were the team that was just growing slowly and now it seems like Unicorns of Love are the ones that have to catch up. So I'm looking at, the, the for Unicorns of Love, that is, the side of Ananasik Boss. That top side, they've been doing so well in internationals before. While that mistake happened with Ananasik ended up dying for uh, the entire engage on towards Decoy, uh, his Kha'Zix pick is going to be crucial in these team fights. If you can find a pick, on towards Chaz like they did earlier on this game, remember he's 0-2 and two for a reason, mm -hmm. then that's their way back into this game. But man, trying to find an answer for Praedith because that's the one I'm looking at right now. That's the power player on Pentanet. 3-0-1, two big ticket items as well as fully completed boots, has his Gale Force, has his Essence Reaver. They have to find some sort of an answer for this Zaya because Praedith is feeling it here in this tiebreaker. Hell yeah, top Zaya players with these items, with that lead, you walk up. You say you, you are baiting the enemy team to touch you because you have so many defensive answers. You have your flash, you have your ultimate, you have Gale Force. You, there is nothing that they can do. And so I want to see, oh, looks like trying to test them right now. He's just playing Red Rover. He dares Alistar over. Santos does not want to go any further forward and Praedith is still just fine. And you can see that. Santos going for the headbutt pulverizer and Lodic was saying, I don't think I want to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, man, let's just, let's just leave this for later. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the right time. All right, it is the right time for some turret pushing, though, as Chaz is applying the pressure in top lane. Praedith doing the same thing here in mid. Pabu throws out the wall of pain, but Lodic's not getting caught by that one. He backs away instead. Gets hit by what looks like a single Skittle there with the Leandri's burn being applied. And just like that, this goes from a no turret game to a couple of turrets being claimed. Oh, not a no turret game, excuse me. The bottom lane tier one had been destroyed. But a couple more turrets going the way of Pentanet. Meanwhile, Unicorns of Love answering there in the bottom lane instead. We'll see if Chaz really ends up in any trouble. Nah, he'll be just fine. Yeah, he'll do it all right. Uh, um, an opportunity to go on Lodic once more. He does have his flash. Oh. They just are trying to burn it. They're trying so hard, but Lodic is able to keep it. I cannot believe that dredge line didn't hit. I thought for sure that that 
projectile with lollipop at the very end and just barely managed to grab him. Yeah, it hits everything. Uh, it's just <laughs> such a disgusting ability. But, you know, it's, uh, uh, Lodic was trusting that he was just out of arm's reach. So great job overall for him to just keep that mental strong. This has been a game where they've been trying for his head for a while. Uh, Pennanet had a great uh, play around mid lane turret. A lot of times it's difficult for teams to get that first turret, but they were able to do that having vision on the side. So Karthus can just run around him. But Lodix has been really respectful as he is not the one with the ball this game. Right. Lodix got to make sure that he's not overplaying his hand, man. Also, if he gets into trouble, remember, this goes back to what you were talking about earlier, how you would have preferred to see something like the heal. He only has exhaust. So if he's taken low, if there's an ignite ticking on him or something, he's just dead. If there's a Karthus laser yeah. above his head, sorry, buddy. We'll see you when you get back from the world of black and white. As Chaz is trying to get himself away up here in the top lane, you've got the engage coming in with the Killer Instinct follow-up, but it doesn't find much at all with Biopanther now now joining up with his teammate, Ananasik will find himself on the flank. Jumps over the wall for Pabu, but now he gets hit by the dredge line. Team fight's gonna break out with Ananasik taking a lot of damage here at the very start. Ignite will burn him away, and Decoy takes the kill. Now you've got Bio Panther and Praetith both moving forward. No man's eating a lot of damage here with the Karth Assaulty coming down. That's what I said about Sky Lasers, baby! It's Pabu! It's a double kill for the jungler, and it's Pentanet here to play! No man's knew his time was up, and he was trying to get a shield on his QRC something burns his flash at the very end just to die pentanet are online pentanet nine to four three thousand gold ahead baron at 20 minutes this is oceania's chance to make it past the first stage and they are looking like they're ready to do it man they just cut the fat off when oceania went you know, a lot of their best players went to north america they like, actually Feel a little bit more limbo, <laughs> limber. <laughs> They're looking really good here. So take a look at this. This was a unicorns of love trying to ch chase down Chaz, but the turn back. This is beautiful from Decoy. We didn't get to see it perfectly here in this replay, but the moment Kazix jumped over the wall to get the assassination on Pabu, instant flash exhaust on his head. Kazix could not get the assassination, and a beautiful ultimate. No man's. I think he was flashing up to the wave to get a Q on yeah. towards it, just not fast enough, and he dies for his trouble. Oh, and you loved it. I mean, granted, Pabu is always smiling no matter what, but the <laughs> smile is like he does, and it's like, oh, it's tragedy. You know what he wanted to do. It just needed to be slightly faster. But now with the Baron under their control, that means that they're set up for a great opportunity to move on to Soul Point now as well. Third Drake of the game will go over to Pentanet uncontested. And now we get to see, Raz, how far can they build this lead? How much momentum can they get for themselves here with this Baron? It's getting bigger and bigger. And we said this coming into this game, when both teams have advantages, they finish. There are not that many mistakes that give the enemy team an opportunity. They're cleaner than a lot of uh, developing regions really are. So taking a look at this Pentanet with this Baron pushing in, let's see if they take that one step forward, but they're eyeing the inhibitor. Okay, Pentanet looking for inhib number one. Pray to the sticks around long enough to get it. Nice dredge line coming out from Decoy. The follow-up will be here as Santos is your next target. They won't have enough damage to kill him through his ulti. He can disengage rather easily, but a pick on the enemy jungler gives Pentanet a 5v4 map state for the next 20 seconds. Someone give Decoy a medal. He has been my MVP of this game as his hooks have been on point. His reaction timers has been solid. Uh, Pabu doesn't need to watch out there. There's quite a few people. <laughs> but they're waiting on the Baron minion wave to come in. Unicorns are love are right now in a desperate situation. They lose this game very obviously. They are out of the tournament. They must find that one engage that brings them back into this. And remember at the start of the day, going into today when we were going to play out the rest of the games in this group, they were one and one against one another. It starts off their first head-to-head. -head. Unicorns take them down. They slam it. It looks really good. But now Santa's coming in, looking for the kill on to Pabu. Why are you going to focus card this man? He always builds the Zonias. It's not going to work that easy. Pentanet now with another 5v4 map state. Now, Pabu is a little bit low on HP. Can't really join up in the fight completely. Does have his ult ready to go. Can still contribute through that. Yep, he may be low on HP, but he's high on life and on stacks. <laughs> he's got 16 stacks on his Magi Soul Stealer. He is humongous this game. Okay, here comes the continuation of the push. Oh. Karthus Salty coming down, just zoning him away. 
just making it so they cannot try to defend this. With enemy jungler and AD carry both at 200 HP, they must heal. There is no other choice. And that means Pentanet can earn their second inhib of the game. They are doing so well with the Baron that they had there. And also, two minutes and 40 seconds until the next Drake, that will be their soul. And we're back in the same position. Remember last time, last game, Unicorns 11 were in a very similar spot where if they get Dragon, sure, that's their first Dragon, but Pennanet are on Soul, and they can play for Baron. No, uh, no Man's really getting hyphy on that one, but it was not the right call. Pabu's probably going to die here. Big shutdown coming in for Boss, but it'll still be a one-for-one -one trade. A double kill back over to Praetith. They might just march it down mid and look for some Nexus turrets here, Rat. They can do it. That's No Man's and Boss down. Your only frontliner is Santis. They are now teleporting in to make this game possible. That's ultimate still on Praetid, so he cannot be killed. He is not the answer here that Unicorns are looking for. Okay, Pentanet on the victory march. First Nexus turret under fire. Santis dropping in, trying to hold the line however he can. Chaz goes after the enemy jungler, forces him back into the fountain here once more. Decoy at 150 HP, no mana. Chaz going in, looking for some sort of a play. Nexus under fire, Santis on the defense. Pentanet, they're all in. They're looking for the fight. They're looking for the win. They're looking for the game. They're looking for their ticket to the next stage, but they have not found it. Unicorns of Love with an incredible defense will hold the line right now. Boss continues the chase. Stridebreaker after Bio Panther, looking to complete the ace here. Won't quite be able to find it because Pabu's back alive, but the Unicorns are holding on. They found something. Thing. They're not going home just yet, but it's so damn w close right now where Unicorns are They're back on the map, and guess what? There's nothing for them to take. Dragon is in a minute time, and Pendanet should be on the map for the next one, but they are able to hold the door. Holy moly, man. Let's take another look at how it went down here. Pentanet thought they had enough gas in the tank to end the game. Pentanet using ulti here, I think, was costly because he needed to hold that one in just because eventually Unicorns were going to stage their last fight. This was going to be it. So a great engage from Santos at the very beginning. And so they're on different pages. Pentanet saying, okay, what do we want to do? Do we want to commit to the fight? And Chaz is saying, I can end the game right here. Definitely can't. Doesn't have the damage yet. No. But at the end of the day, we are still in the same spot. Pentanet are in position to win this. <laughs> <laughs> Going to sleep. <laughs> oh, man. Gold difference whole game, man. We got a couple little blue-colored cliffs up there and then a whole ocean of red that is owned by Pentanet as they still have a 6,000 gold lead. They are still on soul point. They still have map control, and their opponent's nexus is still exposed. Infernal Drake will be started up right now, and the Unicorns just have to deal with the reality. They cannot leave to try to contest this. As soon as they do, somebody can backdoor the Nexus in the game instantly, so that is a free Infernal Soul for Pentanet. Yeah, and there's just a lot of bodyguards in the area. Uh, this is one of those Solid Snake missions that you cannot win. Colonel. <laughs> Yeah, that's not going to happen too well for them. Now they've got to try to hold on. Unicorns of love. This is it. And you can't let them too far into the base either. Lodic just lost 40% of his HP. If they push up too far, they can just try to zerg the Nexus and win like that. Inhibitor respawning here in the bottom lane. Instantly, they're already here. They're ready to take this one back down. Keep the Unicorns trapped in their base. Even if you don't end right now, you still see Baron is live. Now let's see. Nanasik getting himself back, but no cause exalt. He's a big problem for the upcoming God, team fight. Decoy goes in with a dredge line onto the enemy support. Nanasik's already dead. Praetith going in, looking for another. Lodic's going to be taken down. Double kill over to the Oceanic 80 carry. Victor Ulti's looking to do some work, but work will not be done. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in international competition, Oceania will make it past the first round. You can take apart the region, you can take apart the players, but you'll never take the heart out of them. Pentanet.gg, take a bow. No PL, no problem. The LCO is here to play, and that was an amazing set of games from these guys. Absolutely deserved. Incredible stuff for them, incredible stuff for their region, incredible stuff for the fans cheering them on. The boys got it done! And what exceptional gameplay. Usually when teams like this come through, it's off of just one player. You know, one player that pushes them over the edge that they have total, complete faith in. I saw a team play here, a team